What is up guys, my name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database and in this video we're going to be talking a little bit about the new PBR material in Cinema 4D. Now it's not necessarily new, people have been talking about using this reflectance only model since about two years ago, Grayscale Gorilla made a really good video about it, someone has a paid tutorial about it, but I'm going to be showing you um, my take on it and just how I think it fits into the modern workflow, which I basically don't think it does yet. And this is mostly important for people that are using Cine Designer and Set Designer because I'm kind of setting the tone and overall workflow for both of those products. So let's get into Cinema 4D and I'll show you some stuff. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D and I'm going to bring in this wall here. And this is uh, part of Set Designer, but it's the third version and I've updated it to reflect kind of my new point of view on materials and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple instances of it and I'm going to make a really quick room here. Uh, just bear with me while I do this. This is kind of my personal workflow for making rooms at this point. Um, if, all the, if all the walls are exactly the same, which they're not normally. And we're just going to quickly drag in a wall like this. So let us start by uh, looking at the kind of like traditional Cinema 4D workflow um, by making a not new PBR material, just a regular material. And I'm going to turn off reflectance and it's 80% in the diffuse. So we're gonna call this floor. And I'm going to put this on the floor and then I'm going to create an instance for the ceiling. Okay, so those are all the same. And then, oh, got a text message. I'm gonna keep getting those. Uh, I'm gonna take a PBR light, which the PBR lights I'm a fan of. Uh, these are great. Uh, PBR lights are like half the battle of what I do with Cine Designer, to be honest. It's just making them physically uh, accurate invisible and they're, they're lovely. I really, I really uh, enjoy them. I think they're a really good improvement in addition. So I've just added two quick lights through the windows, nothing special. So what I'm going to do now is these uh, center de designer walls here, I don't know what was with the stutter. Um, I've integrated this thing called now PBR materials. So if I turn this off, you'll see down here that a whole bunch of these textures uh, went back to normal. And I'm going to do that for all of these. So I'm going to basically be turning off quote unquote PBR materials for all of them. So now they're all basically back to um, just regular materials with the using the diffuse uh, in the color channel. And what are these other ones at? 95. Okay, so I guess I'll make this one 95 too. It's very bright, but 95. So this is uh, the old way. And again, that just means that we're using color in the color channel, not in the reflection channel. So we have diffuse, but I have the brightness all the way down. That's essentially what that uh, user data script is doing. It turns the brightness of this color channel down, so it's basically not there. So we are now looking at the old school way of doing this. So I'm going to pull these lights back just a little bit, like maybe like here, something like this. And so let's get into the render settings. This is going to be a very render settings heavy video, so it might be a little bit boring for the majority of people who don't care, but I wanted to make this video. I just wanted to have this happen. So I'm going to hit Shift R, and I'm going to let the picture viewer cook up a render. That was really fast. Um, two seconds. Okay, and you can see that I've done a lot of testing before this uh, actual video here to make this possible. And so that's what physical render looks like with no reflectance channel active. There's a reflectance channel, but they're turned off essentially right now. And there's no GI. It's like just like, where's the light directly hitting the wall? And that's what it illuminates. And that looks fine. And what we would normally do to add some GI is I would go into global, global illumination and I would do something like either IC and light mapping, maybe at high, maybe at medium, and maybe at like 10K, something like this. And now we're going to get some bounced lighting. So I'm going to hit Shift R again. This is light mapping. It's ca calculating, I believe, the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth bounce. And then this is... Um, it happened so quickly there was an IR calculation and now we have global illumination. And it's a little bright and maybe the last thing you would add is uh, ambient occlusion. Perhaps turn this down, I don't have any transparency but I always turn that on. Um, back to physical again and maybe we would go 444, zero and as we're getting towards final render quality with this type of workflow, it doesn't add that much time. So let's see, this will be a little bit longer but it's not that much longer and the quality continues to increase. And this is the workflow that I really recommend for Cine Designer users, and that's how I've designed Cine Designer, and I had designed Set Designer was for this workflow. So to recap, we're using the color channel. Uh, I've turned on global illumination, and I've also turned on ambient occlusion. 
right? So that's how we get this look. It's very fast. And to me, that's final render quality for the stuff that I'm delivering, 1280 frame, using a Threadripper 1950X. But Cinema 4D has been um, kind of pushing this, not pushing, but it's, it's been talking about this new workflow here. So that's using the new PBR material. And, and the big difference here, which I know this has been covered, but we're not using the color channel. The color channel now goes in the diffuse channel, which is essentially just another reflectance channel with the, um, with the glossiness turned all the way up. So it's a very, very diffuse reflection, Lambertian surface, whatnot. So we put the color in the in here in this reflectance channel okay and so if i reflect if i replace the material on the floor with this now we're using the new workflow on the floor and i've set up set designer now to be able to switch to this so now i can click on use pbr material for both for all of these objects and you'll see down below these are all now pbr materials okay and so what this does now is I have global illumination completely off and I'm gonna go back to, to low and I'm gonna put this to 2-2, two, two, right? So just lowering the samples. And now what we're basically gonna get is that we're gonna be using this ray tracing engine called Embry, I believe. That's the faster one. You can use physical, but the one that's faster looks pretty much as good and it's faster. So we're gonna stick with the Embry GI engine essentially, which is, they're calling it, um, semi-biased, I think is what they call this, a semi-biased engine. So it's not fully unbiased like Octane or something like that. But with GI off and we're using Embry, um, very low subdivisions. Actually, let me let me even go lower, go preview. So two, two, zero. Look what happens when we render when we're using the new PBR materials and physical render. So this one's gonna be a little bit hard to see. I'm actually gonna get the settings ready to change them because of the uh, the sample size is so low. But what you're seeing here is a very low sample, so very low quality render of this same scene with the PBR materials. But as you can kind of tell, there's a little bit of uh, lightness in the shadows. And we have essentially some global illumination, even though global illumination is off. And again, this has been covered by Grayscale Gorilla and some other people, but um, this was new to me before I had kind of looked into that. And the way to increase the quality of this, actually you can, the shadow quality almost doesn't matter. If I go to four on the um, blurriness and I hit shift R again and send off a render, we'll see that the grain is now um, much denser, it's tighter, it's cleaner, right? And then I would also go from uh, preview to low to medium to high, and it doesn't make a big difference. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, it starts to make a, a bigger difference, but, the issue I have with this, as I let this resolve, this will be like two minutes to finish this off based on what I saw on my test, I'll just stop it, is that it's really hard, even at, even at like say I go to low, it's really hard to get this clean for uh, an interior, which I realize is a, a difficult situation for global illumination um, renderers, but that's all I do is light interiors. I can go to six, and again, changing this doesn't change very much, but I could make this four uh, at low. This takes a very, very long time, which I'm kind of okay with um, if it was gonna look really good in the end, like QMC, QMC global illumination. But this takes an incredibly long time. And at the same time, it's still really noisy in like just the bright areas. Like if I just put a light on a diffuse like Lambertian sphere, it's still noisy. And I don't understand that. I don't understand how this is supposed to work for anybody. So this is how long it takes. This will be like 30 minutes, which I find way, way too slow, even for a 720p uh, frame for this. It's six, you know, six subdivisions in the blurriness. That's a, that's a good amount. I can usually get a pretty clean image with that. And so what I'm guessing is to actually have this resolve to a clean image, if you're actually using lights, like area lights and spotlights, is you have to turn the subdivisions up to like 12. And even at 12, I wonder if this is gonna actually resolve clean. I'm not gonna let this finish, but you can see that there's still a lot of grain and, and noise in this image. It's six subdivisions at low, which is, should be fine. I mean, it's been fine in every other way. So what, what I'm finding is that I guess I'll talk while this is resolving. I'm finding that this, you know, new PBR workflow must only be for pro render right now, or you have like a ridiculous render farm or something like that, because this is 
way too slow for how good my computer is. And I find this completely unusable. So for anyone watching this who uses Cine Designer, who uses Set Designer, I am going to make Set Designer and Cine Designer version 3 when that's out. I will make it possible and very easy to, to use the new PBR workflow, but I'm going to have it default to being off. And if you want to turn it back on, you just click the PBR button and the default materials will then just become, uh, will become PBR and you can use this workflow if you want to. And I'm assuming that if you use the PBR workflow, you don't also use global illumination because then you're doing like two GI calculations and it would also take for absolutely ever. So this was, this is going so slowly, like really bad. And it's kind of comparable speed. I'm going to cancel this. Uh, it's kind of c comparable to uh, if we go back to using just our regular materials, which I'm going to turn off PBR, turn off PBR and turn off PBR. So these are all just regular color channel things again. Um, this is pretty comparable to if we just uh, turn this back on 4, 4, low is fine. And that's if I like, this reminds me of, is if I went to QMC, QMC at high. This seems like a sim similar speed, which is like really, really slow. Uh, QMC, QMC definitely requires like team render um, or a lot of time. And you're just resolving like one still. Oh, I don't probably, I probably don't need ambient occlusion, but actually even QMC, QMC at high this is going pretty fast. And I guess I could turn up these samples a little bit here. So even like the highest quality um, physical render, which is QMC, QMC, I keep saying that like over and over again. Um, this is still faster and probably gonna resolve in a cleaner image, though this is still a little bit grainy. So, you know, overall, based on this, using like the Embry physical only PBR shader workflow, I, I find it too slow. And even at being too slow, it's too noisy. So I, I, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I'm not like an expert at this at all. I've been doing Cinema 4D for about a year, but my job is kind of Cinema 4D now with Set Designer and Cinema Designer. So I want to understand these workflows, but I don't think at this point I'm going to be moving forward with this at all. Like not using ProRender, not using um, these PBR materials. Again, I'm going to build it in for the future because it seems like R20 or whatever they're going to call Cinema 4D R20 and 21 and 22, those are probably probably going to use the PBR material for physical, but for right now, I can't imagine doing that at all. So what I would recommend is don't use, don't put default, don't put your diffuse in the reflectance. Um, maybe it's more physically accurate. Maybe it even looks a little bit better, but I just find it incredibly slow. Um, I really still think that QMC light mapping or just radiance cache light mapping, that stuff looks fine. Those are completely fine to me using these kind of settings. Um, and even at 720p, uh, if I set this off using QMC and light mapping, this is going to look fine and it will render in like a reasonable amount of time. This is a little noisy. Um, so what I would do here, well, let's let this finish, right? So this is QMC light mapping using the GI and ambient occlusion. And that was 16 seconds. And that looks completely fine to me. So I could change this to like high, maybe six. Six seems kind of aggressive. It seems aggressive, especially because there's no... Um, there's no uh, shiny objects in this. There's no shiny materials. 10K, maybe we go 15K here. No pre-filter's pre actually been screwing with me a little bit lately. Um, oh, and this can go higher too, because I'm QMCing, so I can go like 150. I don't know why the max accuracy is um, 200, why it's not just 100. That confuses me t t still to this day. So this is already taking kind of like too long in my opinion, but you know, with these settings, you're going to get really nice looking global illumination in interiors with actual light. So light coming in and bouncing all around. And that's the basically primarily the bounces are lighting the room. That's what's difficult for a lot of GI renderers. This is going to look really, really clean QMC light mapping with relatively low samples. And it's very clean looking. And I think this is completely fine. I'm going to be still continuing to teach this um, workflow Force in a designer version three set designer as it evolves. I'm going to talk about this. I'm just going to be using this one. So that's really quickly. I'll let that f just die right there. That is my look really quickly at uh, the PBR workflow in R19 with a Threadripper 1950X, which I feel like is a decent consumer, um, a decent consumer CPU. So it's not underpowered by any means. 
Um, and I'm going to be saying just use the old workflow, just use the color channel because I don't think the PBR one's so good. And what I'm going to do now is I'll just delete these. I'll just show you really quickly in comparison what Redshift looks like. Because Redshift is kind of like where we're headed right now for set designer and cine designer. And I haven't done like an official demo. This isn't like really an official demo either. But while I'm kind of just ranting and, and making some content about render engines, uh, this is kind of the future of uh, the next build of cine designer and set designer is to be able to incorporate this. Um, we'll go to like 20, which this is not photometric based. It's just image based, but that's fine for now. And uh, I'll show you the workflow for synth for set designer. So I'm going to make a new, not PBR. I never want to use that or not. I you know I'm open to it working. I just don't think it works yet. Uh, I'm going to open this graph and we're going to change the diffuse to um, 95, I guess, and reflection off, just no reflections. So that's the same matte material. It's just a redshift matte material. And I'll show you how easy it is to change set designer materials. We just go like this. And everywhere we have a material link, we just switch it to a redshift material. And then you'll be able to render this stuff in redshift. So it does take a little bit of time, but I've, I've semi-automated this. And of course you would make different redshift materials. And if you wanna use tessellation, technically this will not work, but uh, I'm working on that as well because you have to put redshift tags and all the objects to get tessellation to work, blah, 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 kind of like Arnold for transparencies and whatnot. But with this, uh, I'm going to add a little bit more to this. So like probably like, mm, like 256 samples there. And um, for redshift, I would probably do something like 32, 512. That's a lot. I'll just leave it at 512, that's fine. And I'll do half of this. And for GI, I'm gonna use Brute Force and Irradiance Point Cloud. And I'll show you what a redshift render looks like of the same exact scene. It's very, very fast. So it's going you know, much faster than all of those methods while looking better. You know, better as in cleaner, really. Um, and I could use the interactive one too, but say we go to like 40 and they have a really fast IPR as well, but I'm just showing you how fast the final render is. Um, this isn't like apples to apples comparing a CPU renderer to a GPU renderer, but this is just much faster and cleaner. And I like the fastness of it, how it resolves to a final image that's fairly clean. I like this a lot. So that wraps it up for this video. I am not that excited based on these tests, just using the tests that I have and the hardware that I have. I'm not saying it's not possible for someone else, but I am not that excited about the PBR workflow with physical right now. That just doesn't work for me. It's too slow and I can't even get like a clean image out of it. And I know that if you use HDR lighting, like uh, Grayscale Gorilla, that it works fine, but I don't use HDR lighting. I use actual lights. I use tons of actual lights when I'm doing Cine Designer and that sort of thing. So for people that are interested who are using Cine Designer or Set Designer, we are gonna default the materials to the old school workflow that's gonna use the color channel. It's gonna be much faster. Just use QMC light mapping or IR light mapping and you're gonna be completely fine. And all the set designer assets and set de cine designer assets for version three, they're all gonna be Redshift compatible as well. So we're gonna to stick to physical and Redshift. So that's the update for this video. Um, it's mostly for the people that are using my plugins and software, but it should be helpful, hopefully, for anyone that's having this conversation with physical PBR and Cinema 4D in general. If you have any questions, leave them in the, co in the comments below, and I will see you guys on the next video.